Hello, my name is Lisa Reynoso, and I would like to show you how to make a dress for a child out of a simple shirt and make a skirt to go with it. I prototype my drawing of how the dress will look when it's finished. Here is the, t the uh, shirt that I have I bought at the Goodwill for what three bucks or so. You can use a t-shirt, you could use a polo shirt like this, you can use just about any knit top or even a non-knit top. One that's pull-on is ideal. This is the fabric that I'm going to use. I think it's rather pretty. My mom made it into a maternity dress for me when I was pregnant with my daughter, and she's two and a half now. And I decided it was about time I used the scraps for something. So I'll show you what we're going to do. Okay, what I have done is to measure this hem, the seam here of the hem, on this shirt. In this case, it is 12 and a half inches. I'm in, I could make a simple gathered skirt if I had enough fabric. However, what I've got is roughly 40, 50, 48, 50 inches long, and I don't think I have enough to make a real good uh, gathers, a lot of gathers. So I'm going to make a gourd skirt with six panels. So what I need to do is I need to do some math. We have 12 inches and one half, 12 and one half inches. I need the top of this. And we've got a side panel. We're going to have a middle panel. And we're going to have another side panel. Now the two side panels in the front and in are going to be identical. And the back is going to be identical to the front. The uh, back of this shirt, just so you can see, is pretty much identical to the front. So 12 and a half inches is half of the circumference. So I think what we can do is have 6 inches here and 3 and 1 quarter on each side. That will give us a uh, circumference uh, or half circumference in the front of 12 and a half inches and the same in the back. So now what I need to do is if I don't want any gathers at all this is what I will do. If I decide I want a few gathers then I am very capable of uh, making this a little bigger. Now, I drew these somewhat rectangular. The, in truth, they're going to be a little bit more like this to be truly gourd. And ever so slightly curved on the top. If you go straight across it, they'll hang funny. So I'm going to go ahead and draw up how these are going to look. All right, here we have the front, uh, front and back center pieces of the gore. If you can see, it is slightly smaller at the top than at the bottom. It's six inches at the top and eight at the bottom. Now, what I have done here, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it on paper so that you can see the drawings a little bit easier. What I did is I drew a straight line, and uh, this at a right angle makes a T. Then I decide I drew the I drew this line down here also at right angle to um, make a top and bottom and then I determined the distances here and here and drew these side lines. Now, what you want is for this distance here to be the same as this. So how I do that, and you also want a, um, you want it to be curved on the bottom. So what you do, how you do that is at take one of the sides and draw a line at a right angle toward the center. Where that intersects the middle line halfway between will be your um, will be your the bottom of the skirt. Do the same up here at a right angle halfway between this line and the, that point will be the line for the waist. And you just kind of draw in a nice curve. It's easier to do on a bigger skirt. I did it on this with uh, chalk. I used red chalk.
since the white that I have didn't show up too well. And I estimated my seam allowances at about three eighths of an inch. I generally do that for s children's clothes. You can use five eighths inch if you're more comfortable, but since I serge anyway, it um, it will just take off that excess and it saves a little fabric sometimes, especially if you're short on fabric. To use a smaller seam allowance. I now have my two different pieces my center front and back and my side panels front and back. You'll notice that I drew on this one. I did not draw on the second one because I just laid this one on top since they're identical and cut out the second one. Also, because this has little stripes in it, I did try to line up the stripes more or less. I'm not too worried about it because it's so flowery, but if it were striped only with horizontal stripes, I would try to line up at the horizontal stripes as much as possible. Also, I would try to center the stripes as carefully as possible, which I sort of did with this one. Um, something else to notice, I did use the inside, I'm not sure if you can see it in the video, but I used the inside of the uh, pattern to draw on so that it won't show through to the outside. And uh, keep in mind, if you're doing this for the first time, you might want to draw everything on paper to make sure that everything perfectly matches up. I can see I have gotten ever so slight differences on this. Not a big deal, because I can just adjust it at the hemline and take out any excess on the longer piece. But you may want to do it on paper first and add seam allowances so that you don't forget to cut them, etc., as I used to do all the time, forget to cut them. Then um, the next step is to sew it up. Now, just so that you know, you don't have to do a gourd skirt like this. You can cut out two rectangles, a front and a back, and sew side seams onto them. I mean, sew the side seams, make a hem. You can even cut the skirt off of an older uh, uh, dress or skirt, cut it to the length you want. It's already got a hem. Just gather it and sew it onto a t-shirt. You're certainly welcome to do any of those things. Uh, one more thing I forgot. If you want pockets, which my daughter loves pockets, you can cut them out of excess scrap fabric, which is what I'm going to do right now. All right, here is the pocket. As you can see, I simply took the um, took a pattern that I had made and drawn. It's very simple and I laid it over, I drew along the edge for the seam allowance and simply cut it out. That is all there is to it. You can cut one, you can cut two, and uh, you don't have to, but it's fine. Now, for placing the pockets, it's really very simple. The way I do it is I make a tiny slit right there, maybe half of the seam allowance, and that marks where I place the top of the pocket. Now how you do this is you lay your pocket top edge right against that slit. I'm sorry. And then you sew, since my th seam allowance is three eighths of an inch, I'm going to sew about a quarter inch on all of these. I'm going to do that on this edge that will line up with the set with the uh, other edge so that the pockets will meet. This will be going down the middle, attaching to the middle piece. And then we'll fold it over like that and press it. So now I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, now I have sewn on the pockets and pressed them outward. I just wanted to mention one thing. When you're sewing, a couple of time-saving tips, especially for pockets these small, don't bother to pin them. Just hold them together. And don't start sewing here and backtrack to uh, reinforce the ending of your stitches. Just start maybe half an inch to three quarters of an inch up and sew down and keep going beyond and cut it off. Don't bother to back stitch. It will hold just well fine and also you'll be stitching around this anyway. You'll come up here and you'll stitch around like this. So this stitch does not have to be reinforced and it will hold just fine. And it saves a few seconds. A little time.